Hi, my name is Matt Davis, and I'm the Advertising Director here at My Amazon Guy. And today I'm going to walk you through some of the basics on how you can get started with your very own Amazon PPC campaigns. Uh, before you continue this video, keep in mind that this assumes a few things. This assumes that you've already gotten your Amazon Seller Central account set up, uh, that you've got a fairly baked listing. What do I mean by that? Um, you've got at least a handful of images, maybe a video, optimized titles and bullets. You've got back-end SEO, all that fun stuff. Maybe some A-plus content brand store, hopefully. Um, but this assumes that you're fairly far along in the process and you're ready to actually start spending um, money to advertise on Amazon, right? The power of Amazon advertising is uh, well known to those within the industry, but if you're new, um, Amazon, the reason for its power is because everybody's here simply is to make a purchase, right? Um, that is why the cost per acquisition, the cost for sale on Amazon, advertising far exceeds Google advertising, Facebook advertising, is because it's a less mixed audience primarily. So um, today we're primarily going to be covering, there's three main product types, but we're going to primarily be dealing with sponsored products, which is what I call basically the meat and potatoes of Amazon advertising. Um, of all the Amazon product types, it is both the simplest um, and it's also uh, the most effective in terms of sales per click. Um, the reason being it's usually the most targeted. It uh, drives product, it drives traffic towards a single product and is what we call a CPC or PPC model, which just means cost per click, pay per click, meaning you don't pay until you actually click on the ad. And a sponsored product ad is always driven towards an individual product listing as opposed to a brand listing. Um, the, the other two types are sponsor brand and sponsor display. So let's jump into that really quickly, okay? So I have my Amazon homepage here. I search wine glass, for example. We get a whole bunch of options here. Now, what you notice here is all these little sponsored ditties right here, right? Those guys are telling you that it's a paid advertisement, right? So sponsored product, primarily what we'll be dealing with today is this guy right here. These guys right here, right? Driving to an individual listing. I won't actually click on this because this would actually um, cost the advertiser money anywhere from one to up to potentially $10, depending on how competitive the industry and what targeting behavior, um, you know, how competitive the wine glass search behavior is, right? That's how Amazon pay-per-click works, right? When I say keyword, all I mean is what you might search in the search column here to find your product on Amazon, right? So a keyword search is just wine glass, in this case is the keyword we're dealing with, right? Um, if we were talking about a product target, which is one of the things we'll cover, we'll talk about auto-targeting, manual targeting, which involves either keyword targeting or product targeting, right? Keyword targeting we just covered, product targeting, and pay attention, right? Whether it's um, sponsored product, which are these guys, or sponsored brand, which is right here at the top, right? You notice you've got a brand here, and then up to, uh, it's usually a minimum of three of their individual products. And if I were to click this, this would take, them, take me to their brand store page, which you can create for yourself once you have brand registry set up, which can be covered on another video uh, in the Stephen Pope YouTube channel. So you can go there for uh, great information on how to get that set, right? So this is a sponsored brand ad, which we will cover in another video as well. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you've got your sponsored product ad, right? And what you notice here, I wanna point your attention is no matter what ad type, notice that the sponsored review, the sponsored products are coming in above the organic products. So I have many clients say to me, why do we need to advertise on this behavior on a given keyword or a given product page when I'm already ranking number one, number two, number three, et cetera, et cetera? It's because even if you are organically ranked, you are still below number one. Even if you're organically ranked number one, you're still below the fold. When I say below the fold, what do I mean? Right. This is the fold, right? You can see here uh, that when I search the top one, the top brand, and it looks like the top four sponsored product results are what are quote unquote above the fold. It just means what shows up on my screen before I scroll, right? Once I scroll, now this is below the fold. And what you notice is even the number one organic product, the number one search return for wine search for wine glass on all of Amazon is still below the fold because all the sponsored products take up the top spots. So that's why you should always be advertising and it's very powerful, right? Everybody here, if I search wine glass on Amazon, I'm not doing research about the history of wine glasses on Amazon, as I might be if I were searching wine glass on Google, right? Chances are I might still be shopping, but you don't know. On Amazon, you can be pretty confident that everybody here is here to make a purchase for an end user consumer good, 
right? Okay, so uh, we covered keyword search behavior really quickly. I just want to jump into, uh, before we get to that, sorry, excuse me. So this is a sponsored brand ad, example of a sponsored brand ad. These are all examples of sponsored product ads. The other one is, the other common ad type is sponsored display, which we'll also cover in another video. Let's see if I can find a sponsored display ad. I think I just passed it. Yeah, here's a sponsored display ad right here, right? So this is a set of 414. It's got a video. Um, you can do some things with uh, targeting differences, right? So sponsored product and sponsored brand are both what we call CPC or PPC models. Like we said, cost per click, meaning you don't pay until the consumer clicks on your ad. Um, sponsored display or DSP advertising, which we'll also cover in another video, can also be under the CPM or cost per mill uh, cost type, which mil just means uh, a thousand impressions, right? Uh, so cost per mil just means every thousand viewable impressions, which is just potential page views, that cost model. So that is much more in line with how Google um, and some other uh, platforms run their, um, their cost models, right? Um, you're buying traffic share. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, and then uh, in terms of product page targeting, right? What do I mean when I say product targeting? Manual product targeting as opposed to keyword. We understand now that when I say keyword, I mean this little ditty in here up in the search bar. What do I mean when I say product targeting? What I mean is now that we're on this individual product page, scroll down here, products related to this item. Notice this, you got the sponsored, you got the sponsored ditty here again, right? Sponsored, sponsored, right? So those are ads on product pages, right? Um, this is really good that it allows you to directly target your competitors, either their brand page, not their brand page, excuse me, either their individual products or their brands. Um, you can target brand keywords as well, but this is a way to directly land your product on a competitor's listing if you do it intelligently. Um, okay, so let's get started here. So from your Amazon Seller Central homepage, if you are ready to create a listing, or sorry, if you're ready to create an ad campaign, i.e. you are have a, a listing ready, it's competitively priced, it's got inventory, all the, all the sort of steps to getting the listing optimized and completed are out of the way. You've got a good offering that you're confident in. What you're going to do is you're going to go to advertising, you're going to go to campaign manager, and you're going to dive right. All right. I probably should have logged in ahead of time, so I'm going to pause the recording while I do that. Stand by. Back now, thank you for your patience. All right, so what you do is you go advertising campaign manager and you dive right, right in. That'll bring you to this screen. Your screen will likely look very different from this one. This one is a campaign that we use, an account we use regularly. Um, we do all sorts of testing. Um, this is Steven's personal account. So we do all sorts of fun experimental things on this. Uh, Steven likes to joke that his account is the least profitable at my Amazon. Um, so uh, here we go. So pay no attention to any of this. Yours will probably look a lot more barren. That's okay. A couple of notes I want to point your attention to. Portfolios, which is a tab that extends here. Um, and that will be useful later as you create more campaigns in terms of organizing. That you can export and sort based on that. Same thing with the campaigns. At the campaign level, you've got this little export button that can download to a CSV or Excel file. Um, and then the other thing to pay attention to is this left tab over here. This is probably, I found the most efficient way, these top tabs here, most efficient way to navigate through everything. Um, play around with the targeting API that shows that's relatively new on Amazon. And we'll show you some great data um, down to the keyword level, the key target level. Um, again, this is once you're in the monitoring data phase rather than creation data phase. So create campaign, this orange button right here is what you want to click. And this will bring you to the three basic campaign types that we discussed. We're going to go to campaign. We're going to go to sponsored products. That's what we're going to primarily be covering today. <clears throat> Ad group name. For starters, it won't matter. And all this stuff is sortable or editable later, excuse me. But once you start to build up campaign names, your naming conventions for portfolios, campaigns, to a lesser extent, ad groups become important because, again, when you start running reports or when you export data in mass, in bulk, um, Oftentimes, Amazon API wants to organize under a campaign name or a portfolio data set. That's the easiest way to organize. So think about your naming conventions. I won't get into too much detail about that right now. Um, in the beginning, it doesn't matter too much. It only, it only starts to matter once you have enough campaigns that organization starts to become an issue. Okay, 
So we're going to grab, uh, this is the tab where it's going to ask what products you want to advertise. So this is your product screen. And what you notice here is these are, a lot of these are actually ineligible, right? And the reason for that is primarily because in this case, they don't have inventory, right? Any product that is not able to be advertised, whether it's not a stock or a suppression issue, it should be visible here, right? Um, but let's go rather than newest, and these are all new products and that's why they don't have inventory on them yet. But so for the purposes of this demonstration, let's just go to suggested. Here we go, right? Let's give the aerobics, wine aerobics and repeat wine glass, boom. Okay, and we're just gonna add one. Um, now in terms of which products you add to your ad group, have some thought here. Um, if they are different search behaviors, meaning if they are different enough to where the, your consumer will search for it in a different way, it probably doesn't make sense to go in the same ad group. Not always, there are exceptions to almost every rule in advertising, but you wanna be selective in which products you throw in here because your search, term your search term reports are generated based off of this. So if you have products of different type uh, where consumers are using different search behaviors to find them, um, you won't have accurate conversion data. Anyway, that, that might be a little bit overly complex. For now, just keep it simple. Pick one product or product type. Um, targeting, here's what we talked about. We'll start with automatic targeting, which is just letting Amazon say, we're gonna pick for you uh, where, to sh where to display your ad based on what Amazon thinks is uh, places where you're most likely to convert, right? This is another reason why it's important to have a quote unquote, mostly baked or fully baked listing because one of the things that the automatic targeting will do is it will troll the text and the in the images of your listing to determine what your product is it will use other data points as well but that's certainly one of them so the more complete your listing the more dialed in the automatic targeting will be right away right so let's start with automatic targeting right and we've got you can either let the Amazon set our default bid, or we can break it down by targeting group, right? Um, I usually like to let all four run, um, but I do like to sometimes bid adjust at the manual targeting group, especially in the beginning, because I don't like to presume what I'm going to know, right? Um, I don't know if close, close match or loose match or substitute is going to draw more traffic or more conversions. Um, I'm going to let the data show that to me, but I don't want to go crazy with the bidding too. So I'm going to pay attention to the suggested bid. Suggested bid is Amazon telling you based on how competitive the bid behavior is, what they think is going to be sort of a competitive um, level to win the click, right? And then this range here is 25th to 75th percentile, right? So this will give you a set. And then once you start to collect data, your CPC or cost per click, which is your actual real-time data, how much you're averaging per click, will also give you an additional sort of watermark as to whether your bid is quote unquote aggressive, conservative down the middle, right? So in this case, we're bidding 75 cents per. And what we can see is that's pretty good on close match, not so much on loose match, right? And this is why setting default bid and just leaving it at default bid can sometimes be dangerous, All right? So on this guy, I might bring this guy down and use the suggested bid, right? Same here, same here. This is way over bid, right? And again, why is it giving me these suggested bids? It's based on competition. If you can imagine this as a giant virtual marketplace, a giant auction house, right? The more people that are bidding on a piece of art, the higher the price. So too it is with competitive search behaviors, right? So this guy, a little bit different, compliments. I'm gonna leave this guy at the low end. I favor a more conservative bid structure to begin. Um, you can always go up. I favor, it's easier to go up when you're not getting impressions or traffic because that's not costing you any money. Um, if you start off too aggressive, uh, you, you know, you'll learn the same way, um, but it's going to cost you money. <laughs> so I always like to favor, and again, it's going to depend on what your go-to-market strategy is, right? Some people favor top line. Some people have higher margins in their, in their landed cost and are able to be more aggressive, whatever works for you. Um, launched other marketplaces. We're not even going to touch that one today. Okay. And then negative keyword targeting. This is usually in the event that either you have prior data that suggests that there are certain search behaviors that don't work well for you, or there's a certain brand or a certain product type, or you just know your market niche and you know you don't want certain things right off the bat to target. 
Again, this is all editable later. So you can come back and look at your search term reports as your data comes in, see where you're getting clicks but not sales, and then negative target those search behaviors later on. But it does give you the opportunity, as you can see here, to preemptively negative target something. Now, let me give you an example of when that might be pertinent. I have a client, um, they sell premium underwear, right? Um, premium men's underwear. So their niche is premium men's comfort underwear, right? So Amazon algorithm targeting may suggest that it would relevancy wise make sense to target things like Hanes products, Fruit of the Loom products, Nike men's underwear products, et cetera, right? This client knows that they're not competitive with those brands on cost and they don't want to be. They're a premium niche, right? So they knew when we came on board, when they came on board with us ahead of time, you know, hey, please negative out. We don't want to target anything brand keywords related or not, right? Anything related to Hanes, Fruit of the Loom, Nike underwear, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that might be an example of, hey, I know ahead of time that I've either got a negative term that I want to, uh, or a brand term, whatever, that I don't want. A negative target just means I'm telling Amazon ahead of time, please do not show my ad for this page. Right. Um, really quickly, exact and phrase. Exact phrase and broad are the type of uh, type of match types. We'll get into that into uh, in another video. But really quickly, exact just means exactly that search term. Right. Red hat is red hat. Um, phrase means anything with red hat. Right. So red hat with buttons. Um, Green and red hat, as long as red and hat are present, anything outside of it, it will also bid on. And then broad match, as it suggests, is the broadest, meaning if red and hat are there, doesn't matter what the order they're in, doesn't matter if other things are in between them, if red and hat are both present, you'll bid there. So exact is the most targeted, phrase is the next widest, broad is the widest, right? With negative, it's either negative exact or negative phrase. Um, I usually prefer negative exact. You want to be very, very careful with negative phrase because obviously you're potentially closing the chapter, closing the book on a whole, potentially a whole tree of search behaviors. Okay, so moving on. It also gives you the opportunity to negative product target. So again, if you don't want to target your own brand, other companies' brands, right, that are not in your niche, you don't want to target your own. You want to make sure that you don't, your ad doesn't show up on your own products, right? That gives you the opportunity to do that too. Right. And then campaign name, right? Again, with the ad as with the ad group, it gives you sort of a, a preset basis based on the time and date. If you want to change that, um, we care about naming conventions as an agency because we've got so many. You can just call it test one or whatever you want to do. Right. Doesn't really matter in the beginning. Right. And here's the opportunity to throw it in a portfolio if I wanted to. You can set the start date. So if I wanted to set this in, in the future, I could do that. Right. And then your daily budget. Important to note, daily budget doesn't mean that's how much I'll spend in a day. It means that's the maximum amount I can spend in a day before the campaign shuts off and stops delivering, right? So means I will spend up to $20 in a 24-hour period and no more. Could mean I'll only spend a cent. Could mean I'll spend nothing. Depends entirely on the amount of traffic and clicks I'm getting, right? And then bidding strategy, um, I'll very briefly cover this, right? So um, this is how aggressive you're gonna be with your bid strategy, right? So fixed bid is, I'll start with it because that's the easiest. Fixed bid is just means $1.50 bid on any search behavior is $1.50 bid, is $1.50 bid, is $1.50 bid. $1.50 is on, it's $1.50 on Monday, on Tuesday, on Thursday, on Sunday, right? Always, um, that's simple enough. Dynamic down, now with dynamic bids, what your dynamic just means Amazon algorithm, I'm giving you permission ahead of time to make some decisions on my behalf based on what your data is telling you. So dynamic don't only means a dollar fifty bid is a dollar fifty bid, unless your data indicates to you that I have a less likely chance of conversion, either because of the type of search or the traffic is less lower quality. Whatever the reason, Amazon thinks you have a less likely chance of conversion. In that instance. Amazon, I gave you the uh, ability to, in real time, lower, reduce my bid anywhere. So a $1.50 bid can go all the way down to the minimum Amazon bid, which I believe is $0.02. Cents. It's either $0.10 cents or $0.02. Cents. I always get them confused. Um, $0.02. Cents. Pretty sure it's $0.02. Cents. So, But whatever that minimum bid line is, um, Amazon in real time can go all the way down. So then dynamic up and down is just the same as that, 
except now you're giving Amazon the ability in the event that traffic is more favorable or conversion is more likely, uh, you give Amazon real-time permission to up your bid up to 100%, meaning a $1.50 bid can potentially be up to $3, right? Um, so generally speaking, in terms of starting a new campaign, dynamic down only is the most conservative, right? Dynamic up and down is the most aggressive and fixed bid is sort of the Goldilocks in the middle. Um, I normally start with dynamic down only, and then if I'm not getting traffic, I'll move to fixed. Um, if you're a bit more aggressive, right, and you want to generate traffic more quickly, fixed. And if you're really, really aggressive, dynamic up and down is the way. And then in terms of placement right now, what you're saying here is Amazon's giving you the opportunity to up your bid in terms of where the ad is actually displayed, right? So top of search first page, pretty self-explanatory, right? That's right at the top of the fold where we were just covering earlier, right? So that is going to get you a lot of traffic, but if you're not converting at a high efficiency, that can potentially spend you a lot of your money very quickly, right? So, uh, and it's important to note. So then if I've got a $1.50 bid on a given search behavior, right? Going back up, in this case, it's an auto campaign. So let's just say this was a, a $1.50 bid. We'll, we'll keep going with that example, right? Let's say it's a $1.50 bid under close match here. That $1.50 bid can now become $3. And if it's a nine up to 900%, right? That's 75, if it was a 75%, uh, 75 cent bid, it would be 15, right? Which means $1.50 would be at 30, right? A $30 bid for a single click, right? So that's why you have to be very careful. And, and when I tell my team, when I train them on advertising check-ins for our clients, the first thing they I teach them to do whenever they go and look at an existing campaign is go to the campaign settings because that's where this information will live once a campaign is created. So for now, I'm going to leave that flat, right? And I guess I'll start with dynamic down. Product pages, same thing, right? We covered where product pages were earlier, right? That's on the competitors, uh, another competitor's product page down below, like liked products, right? Similar products. Um, okay. That's it. So you can up. So this is just telling, this is just setting your bidding strategy, your bidding behavior, right? You're telling Amazon how you want it to behave in terms of general bidding strategy. Um, so play with this. It's going to be a little bit different for everybody. But anyway, you click launch. Boom. There it is. All right. And because this is a test campaign, I'm going to go back and I'm going to kill this. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's go back to all campaigns. And very quickly, I'll cover um, manual targeting, keyword, and product. Okay, so again, we're going to do sponsored products. We will cover sponsored brand and sponsored display on another video. The reason sponsored products, again, it's the meat and potatoes. It's the most commonly, widely used type of uh, ad type, and it does have the best sales per click. It's the easiest to get started. It's the most cost effective. It's just the best way to get started, right? Um, you need the, it's the lowest bar of entry, right? Even with sponsored brands, you need at least a certain number of products in a brand store to get started. Okay. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did last time. I'm going to move through this very quickly. Get our wine glass selected, right? I'm not going to mess with, uh, I guess we could just call this test two, right? That's for the ad group. By the way, that's just ad group campaign. Uh, all that is just organizational levels, right? So you can say campaign, it's like account, campaign, ad group. And then you've got your targeting level, whether that's right, your search term reports, your targeting tab, whatever that is. Okay. Now this time down, we go to targeting, right? This time I'm going to select manual targeting. And we've got our two options, right? That we discussed, keyword and product. Okay. Down here, now you notice that the bids are a little bit different, right? We've got the three match types that we discussed, and we've got a bunch of suggested bids here. Now, Contrary to whatever you might have seen or heard in other articles, other videos, please do not just go with whatever they recommend. Um, I'll show you what I mean right here. And this is, I promise you, this was not planned. Why, Harry Potter gifts is one of the top suggested keywords for me for this, for this wine aerobics and repeat wine glass. What do we notice about this? I hope that you notice that there is nothing to do with Harry Potter in this wine glass, right? So this would be a suggested term. 
And I know why. It's probably because it's targeting similar demographics, right? Um, there's probably a data-driven reason why, but this is just low relevancy. I'm just going to spend on this. I'm not going to convert, right? Do your own keyword research. I'll cover that in another video. Use an Amazon data tool. It's worth the price of admission for the basic, whether it's Helium, whether it's Jungle Scout, whether it's Zonguru. I'm not advocating for one over another, but get an Amazon data tool. Do your own keyword research. Figure out what your competitors are ranking for and what they're targeting. You can get a, a hint for it, by the way, just by looking at their listing and identifying what keywords are repeated a lot. What words do you see repeated over and over and over again, right? Those are probably the search behaviors that they're trying to target, um, which by the way, you should be doing too, right? You want your search behaviors that you're targeting in your advertising to some degree to match up with your backend SEO and strategically place keywords in your titles and text, right? It still needs to read well enough for a human, right? The keywords are for the bots, the readability of the text is for the human. Okay, so whatever you wanna select here, you'd select. Um, I'm a firm believer in always keeping, if possible, at least for sponsor product, broad, phrase, and exact separate. Meaning if I was going to make this a broad campaign, I'd make it all broad, right? And then so you select one and it's going to give you a suggested bid and then your bid range. And then we talked about it, right? Um, I'd probably start for me, right? Maybe like 160 and just see how that does. And then come back, right? And if I'm not getting traffic, I know I need to up my bid or I can test it, right? And then you've got your negative targeting opportunities here, your daily budget, all the same stuff, right? Boom, boom, boom. Bid strategy, boom, launch campaign. I'll click that as save as draft. And then I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna get out of here and go back to a new campaign. And then we'll do one more for product target. Come on, interwebs. There we go. All right. So same process. Manual targeting, right? Well, I'm going to go product target. Aha. Now I change it again. Now we have the opportunity to do this in two ways. We can target via individual products, which is actually identifying competitors, right? And placing a bid on their product page. And then the other opportunity is category targeting, which is, right, whatever category or subcategory your product is listed in, showing against every other product. And it gives you a range right here. I would highly, highly recommend if you choose to do category targeting, it's a good way to start, but don't just, don't just spray fire at an entire category, right? This little refine tool works wonders. Click this little refine tool. It allows you to refine category based on brand, to target or exclude brands, to target or exclude based on price range, to target or exclude based on customer feedback. Meaning I could say, if I have a wine glass for $13.99, I'm gonna target um, products that are a minimum of $15. So they're more expensive and they're four stars or less, which means they're, they get less favorable review, less, excuse me, less favorable reviews than my product, right? And then this is the other little widget. Oops. Ooh, 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 ooh. Excuse me there. Okay, no max is what we want. Okay, we'll just call it 100, fine. Right? Boom. I do not know why it keeps doing that. Either way. The products targeted thing down here is very valuable, right? Because it's going to show you about how many products, about how wide a net you're casting, right? Um, play around with that a little bit. And you can also control by shipping, right? If they're prime eligible or not. Everything else will be the same. So you click launch campaign. So that's basically it. That's getting started with Amazon PPC. Hope this you found this video helpful. For all tips and tricks related to anything Amazon, just visit my Amazon guys YouTube page and stop on by and check out the Amazon guy himself, Stephen Pope, for all things Amazon guy. You'll learn a lot. Take care.